know, guys, if you say that you want to bring a bunch of people in, migrants or whatever, I think it would be a good idea before you said that if you got your finances in order so that way you could uh, maybe handle the crisis, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about here. Now, guys, this right here is two videos scheduled for tomorrow, of course. This one right here being on New York and, of course, the next one being on the city of Chicago. The one that's going to be on Chicago, I'm going to make tomorrow. It's going to be a slightly shorter video, you know, talking about the political pressure that's going on, especially given the fact that now the facility that the migrants are going to, you know, the area with the very, very bad soil I've talked about in previous videos, uh, they've decided to pull the plug on that. But we'll get to that a little bit more in detail tomorrow because there's probably going to be an additional update to go along with that one. So make sure you guys stick around for that one, which, by the way, will be video number three. So here's the deal. New York City, of course, biggest city in the United States. You've got a very large police department. Of course, I've talked about this police department's budget cuts in previous videos. I've talked about the budget cuts in these videos, uh, the budget cuts that are going on in the city as a whole. Basically, everything in New York City is about to be affected. Now, there are some people, however, that would say that maybe the borough of Manhattan, maybe that one right there will be the least affected, seeing how it is. It's mostly the area where people go, especially for tourism. But seeing how you've had protesters, you've had Rockefeller Center get hit recently during the um, Christmas tree lighting, protesters, all the pro-Hamas people, or pro-Palestinian people, going out there shouting, screaming. You got to wonder if everybody in the city is about to get tired. Well, guess what? It looks like it's about to happen. Into New York City, but it may now be harder to provide them with essential services. Fox Live's Lizette Nunez is live in the East Village with the details where we have some problems recently. Good morning, Lizette. Good morning, Dan and Tashani. I think what's happening here outside of St. Bridges School is just the perfect example and also insight on how the migrant crisis has been playing out here in New York City. We have a number of folks here camping out, waiting for the school to reopen so they could offer services to migrants. Later this week, the mayor will head back to D.C. to address the migrant crisis, of course, on a national level. This comes after last time his trip was cut short after his chief fundraiser's home was raided. No city should be handling a national problem of this magnitude and this scale. Mayor Adams so sounding off at a conference focused on the migrant crisis as he preps for another trip to D.C. this Thursday to address the matter at the national level. Adams highlighting the financial strain it has placed on the city. We have about 30-something billion dollars that we can move around. Out of that 30-something billion dollars, 12 billion dollars must go to this crisis. Something is going to have to give and is going to be painful to the communities who are in need. But City Hall could be getting more oversight on how it's dealing with the crisis. According to the New York Post, New York City Comptroller Brad Lander. That's only mid-report. Okay, only mid-report. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you've watched this channel for a while, then you have a pretty good idea of exactly what's about to happen. So basically, what's going on here is the embattled, I'm going to call him embattled, uh, New York City Mayor uh, Eric Adams, inherited a city that, uh, for the most part, in the early 2000s, uh, was recovering from the uh, all the crime that had been occurring from the 80s. Yes, I said the uh, city in the early 2000s was recovering because technically it still was. You see, in the 1970s and 80s, New York City was a hotbed for crime. It was a hotbed for a lot of uh, things. Of course, it was also the hotbed for yuppie culture. But then you get Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who comes in after David Dinkins. He does a lot of work. He tries everything he can. Then eventually, September 11th occurs, and he goes down as America's mayor. I've talked to a lot of New Yorkers who have moved to this area, and they lived in New York right around the time that Giuliani took over. They didn't expect a whole lot, but of course, they believe that he helped get Manhattan uh, back in order. Manhattan, like I said in the first part, is the tourist section of New York City. A lot of people love to go to Brooklyn, too, take the photos, you know, under the bridge, you know, the type of stuff that uh, you would see in the Italian neighborhoods. But, of course, a lot of people, if you're not going to a Yankee game, they love to stay away from the Bronx. They also love to stay away from Queens and, of course, Staten Island. And I'm not really going to get too much there, but Staten Island is oftentimes an area of New York City that's not for bad reasons or anything. It's just so happens to be that Staten Island oftentimes doesn't get mentioned. It's actually a pretty place. Most people in Staten Island, by the way, are... Uh, Pretty nice, pretty friendly, and also one more thing, too. They're kind of the first uh, borough to kind of speak out on the migrant crisis and even do anything. I mean, they were the ones that launched the lawsuits, and they were also the ones that were kind of pushing the buses back. I just figured I'd toss that in there.
But of course, you've got five boroughs, you've got roughly 8 million people that live there. You've got probably right around 20 million people that go through that city per day in one way or another, whether it be for business or 20 million may be a little bit hyperbolic, but obviously a lot of services need to be rendered. It's a very big place. Very blue, too. But still, at the same time, I've talked about this city, of course, the voters saying, look, we would like these migrants. So what is a uh, mayor to do? So the mayor, of course, which is obviously an extremely tough job, even though I don't agree with Eric Adams on anything, has obviously got to find a way to budget everything, especially if he's going to have, uh, oh, all these uh, migrants come in. Now, I would be completely remiss if I did not mention Bill de Blasio and how it was that Bill de Blasio is actually the one that started the actual decline, especially in ideology. You see, after Giuliani left, Michael Bloomberg became the mayor. Got a lot of uh, disagreements with him. But uh, the talk that I got from a lot of New Yorkers is that uh, during Bloomberg's time, the city was actually beginning to get a lot better. It was when de Blasio took over that things really and truly began to take a bit of a turn. Some have said that it was actually towards the end of Bloomberg's final term, but still, Eric Adams was coming to a situation that could, in fact, be salvageable, and now he's about to pay the price. Adams has power to reach emergency deals with contractors without prior approval amid the ongoing migrant crisis. A spokesperson from the Comptroller's office told The Post the move came after $1.7 billion in emergency contracts were reviewed in a 21-month span and found, quote, extensive failures to report subcontractors despite problems that surface with them. Recently, tension was also felt with the city and local food pantries. Chaos unfolded at the St. Bridges Reticketing Center in the East Village as advocates attempted to step in and feed asylum seekers. No one seems to know exactly what's supposed to happen at this place. No one seems to know exactly where food is going to come from. No one seems to know if we are even allowed to help them officially. Soon after one of the organizations posted this video, they were contacted by members of Mayor Adams's team and given an area behind the facility to carry out their missions. Advocates say they want more dialogue with the city to continue to help out in any way they can. And one of the advocates that we spoke to says that they've seen a spike in need for food. Not only, of course, are they serving homeless individuals, any members of the local community, but also asylum seekers that we've been seeing here camping out. They said just last week, one day, they had to serve 500 lunches. That's the latest here from the East Village. Basically, he can't get through the red tape and people are stopping him from being able to cut the red tape to uh, get the money necessary to uh, spread around and take care of these migrants. Which is very weird because IA Polls posted this particular thing up and uh, I'll talk a little bit about Cuomo here in a second. But uh, there's been an update to this story that I want to go ahead and throw in first before we talk about what probably happens next. Political turf war after the city controller Brad Lander strips Mayor Adams of his emergency powers to approve contracts related to the migrant crisis. Fox News Morgan Mackay joins us now in studio. And Morgan, the mayor says that it's going to be hard to give migrants the services that they need. He did, Stephen Natasha. And Mayor Eric Adams' administration says that they need this capability to act quickly, especially with more migrants arriving every week. Just last week, more than 3,600 migrants arrived here in the city, a spike that we haven't seen in a while. The comptroller about Brad Lander says this won't stop Adams from doing what needs to be done. It will just make sure taxpayer money is being spent appropriately. There's just too many holes um, in the way that City Hall was using that blanket permission. New York City Comptroller Brad Lander says that his office has stripped Mayor Eric Adams' emergency powers that allows him to make deals with contractors for migrant services without prior approval. Lander pointed to a series of missteps, saying that the mayor's office failed to report subcontractors in certain cases and at times was late in submitting contracts. The $432 million .go contract with subcontractors that don't have the appropriate licenses for their security firms, in some cases paying hotels way above what we're paying others, but that blanket approval that's been letting them do whatever they want is not in the best interest of New Yorkers. Now, how it worked before this was under the mayor's emergency powers, his administration could make a deal with an outside contractor for things such as laundry services for migrants or to rent a small to medium-sized hotel to 
house migrants. After that, the contract will get sent to the comptroller's office for final approval. However, now, with this clawback, this contract will first have to go to Lander's office for approval before the mayor's office can act. The mayor's administration says this is going to cause significant delays. This is an emergency that requires sometimes emergency spending, and we don't know how many migrants uh, Texas is going to send us or whoever else. More than 3,600 migrants arrived in New York City just last week, and Adams officials worry that this spike in arrivals will only continue to grow. Adams took a jab at Lander, saying that he would have hoped Lander's trip to D.C. a few weeks ago to speak with federal leaders about the migrant crisis would have produced more results. He went to D.C. 20 months later, and he came back with tying our hands. Um, <laughs> that's just sort of defies logic to me. So I'm a little uh, disappointed that when he turned from D.C., he didn't come back with any real answers on this is a national problem. Now, Mayor Adams is also headed to D.C. on Thursday. Adams wouldn't give too many details on his upcoming trip, but did admit he still hasn't spoken with the president since late last year. Yes, New York City Mayor Eric Adams will no longer have any, uh, let's just say, emergency powers going forward. I said at the very beginning of the video, and as you guys obviously saw the thumbnail, look, New York City has gone broke, and of course, no more funds are coming in. Of course, they cannot actually take care of this. And of course, schools, all kinds of other things, systems provide just, just good old fashioned services that you would have in the city. It makes me almost wonder when public transportation is going to get cut as well, which is, of course, in that city, very important, especially for tourism, especially for people trying to get to work, people who got to use the subway. Fact of the matter is that Eric Adams is going to have no emergency powers going forward, at least for the time being. And, of course, he kind of did this to himself. Like I said before, they took on way too much. If anything, what they should have just done was said, uh, look, uh, maybe we shouldn't bring these people in, even though the voter base, of course, was demanding that he do that. But now, of course, the voter base, he's starting to see that they don't want this. We've talked this on several occasions. And as a result of this, a lot of native New Yorkers are, in fact, going to suffer. And, of course, given the fact that he's lost his emergency powers, yeah, it's about to get pretty bad, especially given the fact that it is winter and it's about to get really cold in that city. Stephen Natasha. Before, this right here sounds like a complete total mismanagement of the city, its funds, and, of course, the fact that you want to bring in a bunch of people to virtue signal, of which, by the way, I've heard Eric Adams say that uh, more people are coming from Texas. Texas is going to be sending us more people. Texas is not the one sending you the people there, Eric. The Biden administration is doing that. What happened was the state of Texas initially started sending them to blue cities and blue areas, but uh, the Biden administration approved this. You see, what the Democratic Party is looking to do is that they're looking to replenish uh, the Electoral College, their size, their actual uh, Electoral College votes. Let me explain for a second. Every 10 years, this country... Um, they do an update on the Electoral College. Some states will lose Electoral College votes and some states will gain. It's oftentimes dependent on the population. Some people will say that it's more the congressional districts. There's been a bit of an argument there. I kind of seem to think maybe it's a little bit in between. But for the most part, when a state loses people, of course, when people leave, like say in the case of, say, California, where you have a lot of people moving to Texas, and Florida, the ones going to Texas think that they're actually blowing up the state, but they're actually turning off the purple voters in there who are going red. Same thing happened in Florida because that's kind of how Californians do. I'm not talking about the good Californians, okay? Please don't beat me up in the comment section. I'm talking about the uh, the ones from like San Francisco, you know? I mean, even Gavin Newsom's in-laws left for Florida. And of course, you know, the situation it becomes, you know, life in a red state typically tends to be a lot better. But then again, at the same time, I also feel for Native New Yorkers who did not ask for this. They did not vote for this. But of course, there are also a lot of New Yorkers who did, in fact, vote for this. So therefore, obviously, they got themselves a mayor who cannot handle the budget. And to go on top of this, uh, they're looking at the possibility of the federal government not helping them out. But hey, Let's blame Texas, even though it was the Biden administration that said, you know what, just go ahead and let these people go wherever they want. They go to New York, of course, where they got family. They go to Chicago, where they got family. Don't worry, we're rehashing a part of this again tomorrow in tomorrow's video. And, of course, the winter is about to set in. I've talked about Chicago. I've talked about Chicago cold, but New York City is pretty daggone cold, too, especially given the fact that it's right there on the Atlantic Ocean. That little sliver right there. I call it a sliver because it looks that way on a map. That borough is right there. 
surrounded by two pieces of water. You've got the Hudson River going up to Darren State. And, of course, you've got Long Island, which, of course, has also got two boroughs, Queens and Brooklyn. you got Staten Island on the other side, closer to Jersey. And, of course, you've got the Bronx just slightly north of Manhattan. Fact of the matter is, things are about to get a lot worse, and it looks like New Yorkers may be turning to somebody that they thought they would never be forced to turn to, and that right there, of course, is why I'm bringing up the pulp. Now, if you are a native New Yorker, or if you are someone who lives in the city, I want to get your honest opinion. Please tell me in the comments section, because everybody that I have met that came down here that moved during the time frame that Cuomo was governor, I got a few people from New York in my own neighborhood, Grew up with people who were from New York, which, by the way, they moved during the 90s, in some cases, even the 2000s. I've also got some guys I served with in New York, not going to mention any names or anything, but one in particular has told me that uh, the truth be told about the city of New York is that they actually hated Bill de Blasio with a passion, but yet they kept voting him in. They hated Andrew Cuomo with a passion, too, but yet they kept voting him in. Sex scandal had to take him out, or sexual harassment, or whatever you want to call it. But then you get two people. One, of course, is Kristen Gilderman. We'll talk about her in a second. But um, Cuomo is actually beating Eric Adams in one of these polls. Now, this very does not surprise me. It really and truly does not. Because I can tell you right now that as bad as things are, New Yorkers may actually prefer Cuomo over Adams, even though there's the whole... Um, nursing home incident, which quite frankly I think uh, should always be revisited when we talk about Andrew Cuomo, the deaths that quite frankly are on his soul, that which by the way the media gave him a pass on, but still at the same time, that then leaves Kristen Gillibrand, who I like to call Cringe. She was the crazy white lady who ran for president, senator out of New York. She was a Karen, blonde hair, very pale skin. I'm showing you guys a photo of her now. Uh, she came off as very cringe in the first two debates, uh, and eventually she dropped out. She realizes she didn't have a chance, but uh, you got to wonder, obviously, she would have to uh, retire from the Senate, or maybe she could you know, get reelected, who the hell knows, then retire afterwards, and the governor, uh, Kathy Hochul, could obviously appoint somebody. But what if Kathy Hochul loses the state of New York? Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but of course, when you see polls showing Robert F. Kennedy splitting the vote, and I know Hochul is not up for... Uh, She's not up for re-election, not till 2026, but still, you got to wonder if third-party candidates get involved in this situation, the state of New York could actually flip. You never know, especially in a low turnout election, especially on the gubernatorial level, you could get Lee Zeldin if he tries to run again. Fact of the matter is that the political pressure is, in fact, on these people because they completely mismanaged their funds. They completely bit off a lot more than they could chew in this situation. You've got migrants all over the place, and now you've got to cut your police departments. And to go on top of cutting your police departments, now you've got to cut sanitation. And uh, also to go on top of this, to get the additional budgetary funds that you would actually need to help take care of this... Yeah, the city of New York, the people who are in charge of the red tape are basically saying, no, you need to learn to go back and actually budget the money that you have, which, of course, Eric Adams said was roughly $30 billion for him to move around. Maybe what you should have done is said no to the migrants. Maybe what you should have done was not profess that you were going to be a sanctuary city. Maybe you should have done that. Maybe you should have put native New Yorkers first, even if they did not, or maybe even if they did want these migrants. You see, sometimes as a leader, you have to save people from themselves. You can run on the platform, but once you get elected, you can say, you know what? Don't bring these migrants over here. We quite frankly don't have the budget for it. Maybe they'll go somewhere else. The people will get upset with you probably six months or so in, but then they'll realize that, hey, it's just another day, another dollar. After a while, they'll forget about the entire situation. If you just do a halfway decent job, they'll find a way to keep you in office. But this virus does not look like it's going to be the case. Looks like Mr. Eric Adams may find himself out of a job, if not by the FBI, definitely by election. So at the end of the day, you did this to yourself. Like I tell a lot of the voters who voted for the uh, current administration that you kind of did this to yourself with the migrant situation. You kind of did this to yourself with the city's budget issues. And, of course, the state of New York itself is probably going to suffer, too. So, great job of screwing over your fellow New Yorkers. Great job of screwing over the rest of America, too, in the process. Because this little political football that you guys have been playing for a very long time involving migrants is only going to make everybody's life a living hell. And it's only going to damage the country further. So, congratulations. You broke it. You bought it.
With that right there being said, guys, John Clay Moore, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sound off in the comment section. There will also be another video coming out tomorrow to go along with this one right here on the Situation in Chicago. I'm going to move the Oregon video to Thursday, seeing how it is. I think it's a little bit more, a little bit broader in overall scale. So make sure you guys stick around for that. And of course, if you're a native New Yorker and you agree, or even if you disagree, please leave a comment in the comment section. I would love to hear what you have to say. And I'll see you guys later.